I think Lewis always had a lot of art in it because Hef is a very visual person. For him, one of the chief responsibilities that he's had is separating this magazine from other magazines on the newsstand. One of the most important things about Playboy art is that it's almost always better than the art you see in other magazines. It's lusher, it's more lavishly executed, it's often more painterly, it has more detail, sometimes it becomes more abstract, uh, other times it's almost photorealistic. You know, Playboy art really runs the gamut, and as I often say, Playboy is really a gallery that you can hold in your hands. It's a sensory experience from cover to cover. And one of the ways that we did that in the early and mid-1950s was that we used artists that other magazines would never have hired, artists who would never have agreed to do illustration or artwork for a magazine. And we asked those artists to really push the envelope. Hi, my name is Aaron Baker, and I'm Playboy's curator. I take care of the corporate art collection, and I'm also the resident art archivist. Playboy chose these 16 artworks um, to comprise the art of beauty for this important reason. They really represent our philosophy towards sexuality. Uh, that is that this is a sexuality that is upbeat, positive, healthy, liberated, and that allows these women to have fun. They're enjoying their lives. These are the girls next door. And you know, sex is a healthy part of their lives. It's not the focus of their lives, but it's something that they enjoy. I think that these cartoons are very representative of the Playboy philosophy towards humor. Um, first and foremost, Playboy humor always satirizes, it pokes and it prods, it makes fun, but never in a mean-spirited way. Typically, the object of the humor is America's puritanical streak. I think that these cartoons uh, really also show the Playboy philosophy that sexuality in particular is something that's to be taken lightheartedly. It's, it's an inevitable part of life, but it's only part of life, and it's a part of life that we should enjoy. We should be enthusiastic about it, we should enjoy it, and be lighthearted about it. Humor has always played such an important role in Playboy magazine uh, for a reason that a lot of people don't know. And that's that before he became a publisher of a men's magazine, Hef wanted to be a cartoonist. And he actually published a book of cartoons called That Toddlin' Town. Uh, we always say around here, luckily for us, it failed. Because he went on to pursue his second dream, which was to have the best men's magazine in the world. When he started Playboy, Hef decided that he would hire cartoonists. He would hire some of his heroes. And hopefully, he would make heroes out of young cartoonists uh, who would become the stars of the future. Another reason that we call this the art of beauty is that the works are beautifully painted because these women are beautiful. And uh, as we always say when we give tours here at Playboy, if it weren't for beautiful women, we wouldn't be here. The art of beauty will definitely appeal to a cross-section of collectors. You'll have collectors of comics that will be interested in this work, uh, collectors of Leroy Neiman who will definitely be interested in the Leroy Neiman that appears, Patrick Nagel collectors, You'll have Playboy collectors. These are guys and girls who, who just collect everything Playboy, who would love to have a Playboy cartoon, who would love to have a Vargas. Uh, you're going to get people who collect magazine artwork. Uh, you're going to have the random collector who's never bought a thing in his life, who sees a cartoon and it just resonates with him. He remembers it or it reminds him of a particular Playboy era that was very important to him. Anytime that we decide to sell some works from the Playboy Art Collection. It's a bittersweet experience. It's a lot like being a parent and seeing your children leave the nest. As a curator, you want to protect these artworks and you want to always have them nearby, but there comes a point where it's time for them to move on. And, you know, just as sad as you are to lose these artworks, you're proud at the fact that there are so many people who can see the good in them. And, um, you know, you revel at the opportunity to celebrate these works in a public forum. One of my favorite cartoons that appears in this auction is by Jack Cole. It's a female by Cole. Now, Jack Cole was first famous for creating the comic book Plastic Man, uh, which he did in the 1940s, which still resonates with comic fans today. This particular work is a female by Cole, and that was one of the most popular series 
that he did for Playboy. Uh, Females by Cole depicted women, various women from all over the world that men might encounter. Um, so this feature went on to become so popular that it actually uh, donned the second ever licensed product by Playboy. We made some napkins, cocktail napkins with Females by Cole on them. Hugh Hefner and Leroy Neiman have been friends for many, many years. They actually met when Hef was working as a copywriter at Carson Peary Scott, which is a Chicago department store. At the time, Hef was talking about how he wanted to start a men's magazine, and Leroy, as his friend, would hear him out and think, yeah, right. And then, of course, Hef went on to do it, and not only do it, but hire Leroy to illustrate works of fiction and fashion features for the magazine. And Leroy likes to tell that story to this day. He likes to uh, make sure that people understand how surprised he was that this young kid actually pulled this off, that he made his dream come true. Uh, Leroy continues to work for Playboy to this day. He still does the Femlin, which is the little female gremlin, hence the name, that appears on the Party Jokes page of Playboy. He's been creating the Femlin for us for over 50 years. But where Leroy really hit his stride was with the man at his leisure feature. This was a feature that had Leroy basically working as an artist in residence here at Playboy. Uh, Man at His Leisure was supposed to show the jet set enjoying life all over the world. This was back when you could talk about man at his leisure as opposed to humankind at his leisure or mankind at his leisure. Um, so what Leroy did was travel all over the world. He stayed in the best hotels, he ate at the best restaurants, he attended sporting events, and he made paintings about everything that he saw. We chose this particular work from Man at His Leisure, Yugoslavia, for a number of reasons. The first, admittedly, is because it's beautiful. When you look at it, you really see Leroy at his best. He's a great draftsman. He handles paint better than any artist I know. He's a great colorist, and uh, it really just shows the strength of his art. We also chose it because it illustrates the fact that he was Playboy's artist in residence. He would go to a nudist camp and hang out with the nudists and make art about what he saw. But lastly, the fact that he's depicting nudists in Yugoslavia, which was a communist country at the time, uh, I think makes a statement about the fact that you know sexuality is something that people enjoy all over the world, regardless of um, the governments, the political environments uh, in which they live. This particular artwork by Leroy is a statement about personal sexual liberation. It shows people in a communist country enjoying their sexuality, comfortable with their bodies, out enjoying nature, and uh, Leroy was there to capture the moment. Of course, Alberto Vargas was one of the greatest pinup artists of the 20th century, and he certainly was one of Playboy's most beloved contributors. Um, he had a great relationship with us and us with him. It was really through the efforts of a young Playboy art director by the name of Reed Austin that he came to be in the magazine, actually. Hef was a fan, but he needed to be convinced that Vargas's work could work in the magazine. Reed felt it was a great way to get more nudity in Playboy without having more photography. And so he continued to work on his boss until Hef agreed to have uh, Vargas appear in Playboy. Uh, Reed continued to work with Alberto on a regular basis, shaping the work. They would write letters back and forth, and their letters are actually very affectionate and very informative about their working process. One of the things that would surprise people about Vargas is that he was a very shy and very nice and somewhat conservative guy. Even though he had these beauties parading in and out of his studio, because he worked for models, mind you, um, he was very devoted to his wife, very sweet-natured, and um, not all that risque. And so we had a, a very friendly push-pull relationship where we were always trying to get him to be a little sexier, a little edgier, and he wanted to keep them very classic and very conservative. People are always surprised to learn that Alberto painted from life, and certainly he, he would paint from photographs at times as well. But he did work for models. Uh, most famously, he used Anna May, who was his wife, as one of his early models. Um, 
his, his paintings are so idealized and the women in them so voluptuous that it becomes difficult when you look at the painting to imagine that there was a real woman who posed for that work of art. But indeed, that, indeed there were. And I think what those paintings show you is that there are a mixture between uh, what Alberto really saw, uh, what he wished that he had seen, and I think most importantly, what Hef wanted to see. I see this particular Vargas as a great example of how his work changed with the sexual revolution. So that in the late 60s, you tend to have more paintings where the women are active. In this case, she's running towards the viewer. And for me, this is a great statement about how comfortable this woman is with her sexuality, right? She's running at you, not in a, not in a scary or lusty way, but in this kind of joyous and enthusiastic way. And uh, if you look at the picture, it's clear that her shirt became unbuttoned and that that was unintentional. But this isn't a girl who's ashamed about that. She's comfortable with that. She's probably just going to button it up and go about her business. Patrick Nagel was certainly one of the most famous Playboy contributors in the, in the late 1970s and early 1980s. Uh, Nagel made illustrations for our Playboy Advisor feature and our Playboy After Hours feature. And the women were always depicted in a highly stylized manner, typically with these really flattened kinds of planes where you would have an even flesh tone outlined with black, the hair would be one color. Everything was very graphic and taken down to its most basic element. And um, this style was largely taken from Japanese woodblock prints, which were influential for a lot of artists in the 1980s, uh, but particularly for Patrick. And so Patrick was probably the best purveyor of this style and became very famous when one of his works appeared on a Duran Duran album cover. Uh, the album was called Rio. And of course, he had been working for Playboy for some time before that and was known for his Playboy work. But that was really the springboard to huge fame for Patrick. And what I always say about Patrick's work is that whether you like it or whether you don't like it, Patrick won. Because when you go to a hair salon and you see the graphic of the woman on the front of the hair salon, and she's simplified with these bold black outlines. You're looking at Patrick's work. You know, his work has been um, sampled, if you will, uh, by so many artists all over the world. Collectors will be really excited to see that we have complete Annie Fanny stories available in this auction. Uh, Annie Fanny does appear at auction from time to time, but typically you see single pages. But you rarely see complete stories like these. And of course, these are particularly good examples of Little Annie Fanny that we selected just for this heritage auction. Little Annie Fanny was developed through a collaborative process where Hugh Hefner worked with Harvey Kurtzman and Will Elder, both of whom were humorists and cartoonists from Mad Magazine, who had moved on from Mad Magazine and were looking to do something new and exciting. And uh, the three of them had worked on a magazine called Trump Magazine, which came out in 1957 but went on to only have two issues. But Hef really liked working with these guys, thought they were very talented and wanted to do something else, and so uh, decided that what would be best is a comic strip for Playboy. This was to be a more adult-themed comic than most that people were used to at the time, and feature a character named Little Annie Fanny, who was, if you will, kind of a naive girl who was very well-intentioned. She was a good girl and um, very much uh, out in the world trying to do good things for people. But try as she might, she always ended up in crazy scenarios where her blast would become unbuttoned. One of the things that collectors will notice when they look at these little Annie Fanny stories is how topical these comics were. And that really was very important to Hef and very important to Harvey Kurtzman, that um, little Annie Fanny always be funny but always be commenting on the issues of the day. So, for example, you know, one strip might make fun of Beatlemania, while another one makes fun of the latest exercise craze. Uh, they always had something to say about the times, and usually they were satirical without being biting. They were always lighthearted and always a good, a good romp.